During an impassioned speech on the U.S. Senate floor in February, Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren criticized the country's rigged, two-tiered justice system. Warren explained that while wealthy white-collar criminals regularly receive no punishments for their actions, nonviolent drug offenders are met with the full force of the law. Equal justice under law. That's supposed to be the basic premise of our legal system, that our laws are just and that everyone, no matter how rich or how powerful or how well connected, will be held equally accountable if they break those laws. But that's not the America we live in. It's not equal justice when a kid gets thrown in jail for stealing a car, while a CEO gets a huge raise when his company steals billions. It's not equal justice when someone hooked on opioids gets locked up for buying pills on the street, but bank executives get off scot-free for laundering nearly a billion dollars of drug cartel money. We have one set of law on the books, but there are really two legal systems. One legal system is for big corporations, for the wealthy and the powerful. In this legal system, government officials fret about unintended consequences if they're too tough. In this legal system, instead of demanding actual punishment for breaking the law, the government regularly accepts token fines and phony promises to do better next time. In this legal system, even after huge companies plead guilty to felonies, law enforcement officials are so timid that they don't even bring charges against individuals who work there. That's one system. The second system is for everyone else. In this second system, whoever breaks the law can be held accountable. Government enforcement isn't timid here. It's aggressive. Consequences be damned. Just ask the families of Sandra Bland, Freddie Gray, and Michael Brown about how aggressive they are. In this legal system, the government locks up people for decades, ruining lives over minor drug crimes, because that's what the law demands. Yes, there are two legal systems one for the rich and powerful, and one for everyone else. Last Friday, I released a report about the special legal system for big corporations and their executives. The report is called Rig Justice, and it lists 20 examples from the last year alone in which the government caught big companies breaking the law, defrauding taxpayers, covering up deadly safety problems, stealing billions from consumers and clients and then just let them off easy. In most cases, the government imposed fines and didn't require any admission of guilt. In the 20 cases I examined, just one executive went to jail for a measly three months, and that case involved 29 deaths. Most fines were only a tiny fraction of the company's annual profits, and some were structured so that the companies could just write them off as a tax deduction. It's all part of a rigged game in Washington. Big businesses and powerful donors with their armies of lobbyists and lawyers, they write the rules to protect themselves. And when they don't follow the rules, they work the system to avoid any real responsibility. How can it be that corporate offenders are repeatedly let off the hook when the vast majority of Americans, Republicans, Democrats, independents, want tougher punishment and stronger new laws for corporate crimes. Well, that's how a rigged system works. Giant companies win no matter what the American people want. Republican politicians love to say they're tough on crime. They love to talk about personal responsibility and accountability when they're back home in their districts. But when they come right here to Washington, they're pushing to make it even easier for corporate criminals to escape justice. The American people know that we have two legal systems, but they expect us to fix it. They expect us to stand for justice. They expect us to once again honor the simple notion that in America, nobody is above the law. And anyone in Congress who thinks they can simply talk tough on crime and then vote to make it harder to crack down on corporate criminals, hear this. I promise you, I promise you, the American people are watching and they will remember.